Okay, so I'm gonna unbox or I unboxed earlier my isopods, my new isopods, and one of the ones I got was Porcel Porcelli Dilatatus Giant Canyon, and so now I'm gonna put them in a spare Exoterra I have. I've had this set up for a while. It was in the garage because I don't even remember what I had in there. Um, but it's just an old Exoterra and I thought it might make a nice home for the isopods. Um, so yeah. They, there's already a lot of the stuff that I need in there. There's, uh, down below here, there is some lava rock which is acting as a drainage layer, false bottom. Then there's a screen material to keep the dirt from falling into that. And then there's some dirt. I think it's potting soil, but it might be reptosoil or something like that. Or, oh, it's probably eco-earth. Then on top I just have some kind of mulch and a cool piece of wood with some lichen some rocks, cork background. These are pretty awesome. This one's pulling away from the background though. It's kind of curving. So I need to fix that at some point in time, but if nothing else, the bugs will get back there and they'll probably love it. Um, there's a little charcoal left in here. I tried to grow isopods at one point in time, but I think that the ones I got were dead on arrival because I opened up the jar and there was no motion and I was still really new and I wasn't sure if the isopods, or sorry, the springtails would come back uh, because there might be eggs or something. So I tried to put it in here anyways, but I think it just got too hot in transit. So we're going to try again, but I, w I know a little more now, so I at least know what springtails look like, which is far ahead of where I was last time. So, there's only a few things we need to do to set this up for the isopods. I'm going to put in some more dried leaves. This is just dried leaves that were left over from the yard that um, we raked up and saved and put in a bag. And Normally I would sterilize it, but this has been sitting around for forever. So it can degrade and I doubt there's anything still alive in there. It's been a really long time. So and normally I'd put way more le dead leaves in there. There needs to be a lot of dead leaves but they're still in transit. The ones I ordered. So for now this is what they get. Um, and the ones in the yard around here I don't know if they'll grow isopods because there is a, a issue when I went to collect leaves, I didn't see any bugs in it. So I'm worried that the, it might be poisonous or something. So I'm not going to use that. I'll just order some leaves. So now I'm putting in sphagnum moss. This is moss I got from Josh's Frogs, but the, it's all over. It's a most garden centers. You can get it from Amazon. You can get it wherever. So I'm putting a good clump in this back corner because I'm going to make that the humid corner. So isopods need a lot of liquid to flourish. And you got to keep the humidity up. What are the, but they also need a way to get away from the humidity if they're too wet. So the way, the solution to that is to dampen a good section, make a moist area, and then they can self-regulate. Okay, so now, I'm really going to spray the heck out of that thing. Lots and 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 lots of water. This is all really dry. Um, although, 
You know, and now I'm getting that awesome smell, like when you wet soil. I always love that. What is the word? Now I can't remember. If you remember, write it down below, because it's going to bug me until I know. There's a term for when soil's wet and then it gives off that, off that really awesome smell. Okay, so that's a little dampened, but it really isn't enough. So, I'm going to take a jug of dechlorinated water and just really dampen it. By the way, this tea is pretty awesome. It uh, almost tastes like homemade. So, this will ruin the look, but I'm also going to put an egg carton in here so that they can go from the wet side to the dry side. Which I like this, ro uh, this piece of wood. I'm going to put it up here. So this way they have kind of a moisture highway. I am a little worried about them getting out because I'm not sure how big these vents are for the exoterra. But I think it'll be okay because people use them in bioactive enclosures all the time. You can even have a little feather in there. Um, they will actually eat feathers and stuff like that. Not that you should put a ton in there, but a little is okay. Um, so now they need some calcium, which could be cuddle bone, um, eggshells, crushed eggshells, or I'm going to use some calcium powder. I'm going to put cuddle bones in at a later time, but I don't have them right this second. Or a bunch right this second, so i got to go pick some up. But, nice little puddle right here so I can keep an eye on it. And when they eat it all, then I know I can put more in there. And then, so... This is the bioactive uh, booster from Josh's Frogs. Not sure exactly how great it is, but it's supposed to help. So what the heck? I'm gonna put a sprinkle of that in there. Can't hurt. I think it's like bacteria that helps seed the aquarium. Ooh, and that's dusty. Don't do that where there's a fan. Wet that in there. Try not to get the calcium powder wet. So, I'm also going to get give them a little food. Since I'm going to put springtails in here as well, I'm going to put some nutritional yeast, brewer's yeast kind of thing in there. And... The springtails really like that. But they only need a tiny amount. Like, don't overfeed it, because that's one of the biggest problems. And isopods eat a lot of different things. They mainly eat the king wood, dead leaves, but they can also eat some food scraps, like semi-hard vegetables, like squash. Not Probably avoid watery ones, but... I'm going to put some fish food in there, just a little, so they have some yummies. You always want to put some protein rich food because we always think of bugs as these nice little creatures that just eat dead long clippings and stuff, but really that's not even close. They will devour all sorts of things, including your animals if you don't give them enough protein. So you got to be careful which type of isopods you put in a terrarium. If you want them as a cleanup crew, the Porcellini, Porcelli, sorry, gosh, uh, Porcelli 
they uh, tend to be a little more ravenous and that can be dangerous if you have something like a tarantula that will molt or little dart frogs or you know frog eggs stuff like that um, but feeding them helps if you feed them protein rich foods a lot of people do things like morning wood or rapashi by rapashi or bug burger or stuff like that and it all helps so now this is my nice little colony of springtails I got the other day. Oh, and wow, they are swarming. I don't know if you can see that. Okay. They are really swarming all over the place. There is one little fly in here that's being a pest. I guess that's good because that means it's appealing to bugs. Oh, I'm going to put another piece of charcoal in there, too. Because some fresh charcoal for the isopod, or for the springtails to eat. And then we're going to knock off a little bit of springtails into the colony. So we just scoop out a section and tap it on there. And normally I'd put more in there but I only have the one colony right now and I've got to make six isopod containers plus the bioactive uh, terrarium viv vivarium actually for my ball python so I don't want to use it up all, all up on one container so now I think it's time to put our little springtails in that nice These are the giant canyon, which are one of the bigger isopods. They aren't the biggest, but I really think they're cool the way they get real, pretty big. And the seller, he packed them in sphagnum moss to keep them nice and hydrated on the trip. Because I just mail ordered these from somebody in California. Let's see. Oh. So sometimes these guys come in an orange color, which is what I was hoping for. But I got the more traditional color isopods, which is fine. So let's see. They're pretty cute, huh? And you probably can't see that at all. Sorry. I need to get a macro lens so that you can see stuff like this. Because really, they're really cool looking. And so we're just going to set these guys right in in the humid area. So they have a nice little setup there. Oh, and let's see. Can you see that? Still in the container? They're pretty cool. Let's see. Make it easier. They try to bury themselves. These aren't the most visible of isopods. They hide a lot. But they should be pretty cool. There you go, guys. If you're seeing a large container with a lot of isopods, you might want to put them in different places so that they can spread out a little more because else they might form a little clump. Um, so, yeah. We'll see how these guys do. Hoping they do pretty well. And one thing to always remember is to put name tags. Can you see that down below? Let's see. Let me lower this a little. Put the actual proper name of the isopods or whatever you have in the container because really you're not going to remember. You're going to think you're going to remember. You're going to say you are 
and then a couple months down the line you're going to go, which were these ones again? So just label stuff. So here it says Porcilio Delatatus, Giant Canyon, and Springtails. So I at least have an idea of what's in there. So let's see if I can do a close up. Of pretty easy setup. Not the best, but for now it'll do. I'm hoping to get. I've got corkwood and uh, leaves, dry leaves, on their way. We'll just have to wait. And, but I'll let you guys know how well these do.